Hi, welcome to podcast number two, curated by Black Dove, sponsored by our friends at Possess. Today we welcome incredible digital artist, Kenneth Wayne Alexander. Kenny, it's great to have you here today. It's always good to see you, Mark. I miss you. We haven't seen each other since probably Art Basel last year. Yeah. Yeah, that's been a long time. Uh, very, uh, very long for us, but, uh, so it's nice to catch up personally as always. One of the best parts about this podcast is that it's allowing me to reconnect with all of our artists, uh, and share our stories. So I'm really excited to be able to allow you to share your story, which is, uh, really near and dear to my heart. I've had you, you know, you've come and live with me in my home before we've had amazing exhibitions together. Um, so, uh, why don't you introduce, uh, to get started yourself to the community? Hello to everyone. As I said earlier, my name is Kenneth Wayne Alexander II. I am a working artist, a curator, and a writer from Memphis, Tennessee. I started doing my, I guess, my initial drawing style when I was about four years old, when I was drawing out of my mother's yellow notepad with a pencil and a pen, creating, you know, Street Fighter characters and Ninja Turtle characters, just anything that piqued my interest. And uh, after that, I started to learn more and more about the process of drawing and what it meant to be, become this this person who can make things. And that showed me a window in my mind to where I can be a mark, be a mark on this world, like have a whole idea come to life. So when I started to explore what that meant to, to become an artist, you know, I did all kinds of stuff. I used to make different structures at home with what I had and what tools I had and create different scenes from Aladdin, Lion King, the whole nine yards. So as I got older, I started to watch a lot more anime. And that really opened my mind up, not only as a as an artist, but also as a writer. Because I seen what they were conveying in their stories and along with the artwork to convey a strong message to the viewer. And I started to create my own comic books in their light. And as I got older, I went to my first drawing course with Mr. Johnson at Kirby Middle School. And that's when I started to learn about figure drawing, like drawing humans and understanding the structure of how the bones work when you're turning your arm or how does your muscles work when you're flexing or, or when you're relaxed. Just understanding the human the human anatomy at a very young age at a school where they didn't think they were teaching <laughs> teaching that kind of stuff to kids. But I had a really good art teacher that showed me the basis of it. And it, I just took off from there. And when it came to me understanding what that meant, to be a figure drawer and a and a um, and a cartoon and a cartoonist, I wanted to mix that together. Like, what does that look like? And as I explored that more, when I got to high school, and I got to my my really in depth art classes, and and a uh, case of points, I was outside of the jurisdiction of my actual school that I went to. I had to make a whole portfolio from scratch and present it to the actual uh, school itself. And they let me in just, just right there from what I made. And so Dr. Rook and Ms. Burton and Ms. Wildman were my three just titular art teachers that taught me so much about understanding color theory, understanding, the, understanding um, how colors reflect upon the surface, how light reflects on the surface, all the way down to how you put your own theorems into your actual work. And I started to study more um, great artists from the past, like Magritte, um, 
what's the boy name? El Greco, Rembrandt, of course Picasso, and um, Paul Rashan, just different artists that really caught my eye. And the one, well, and also Cavaggio. Cavaggio lighting is incredible. But and <laughs> but the main artist that I pulled inspiration from was Salvador Dali, because he was because I saw him breaking reality but giving it a human and a and a relative meaning to it meaning that you can create different environments but still, but still tell the same story and i wanted to pursue that more and when i got into miss wildman's class that's when i started to learn more about the digital side of art and this was back in 2005 and i started to understand more about the structure of putting what I made on paper on the actual digital screen. Now it, it took forever to learn how to convey it. I was, I was terrible at it at first, but, but with a lot of trial and error, I figured out how to merge both in, into one thing. And that led me to not only being in the Brooks Museum of Arts about 10 years later, it also, allowed me to become a working artist and allow me to teach and show how it can be done in a city to where it is borderline impossible to make this happen and to understand what it means to 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 go full force of what you believe in and sacrifice and work hard and make sure that everything that you're building can be can be taught to someone else who wants to hear your story and so they can be inspired by you as well. And so that's a, a small little, you know, etching into what I do. Tell me about your family, Kenny. Huh? Tell me a little bit about your family. Oh, my family. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love my family. My family's amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mother is one of the most intelligent, caring people on earth. Like, she, she taught me so much growing up about you know just sticking to your word and not giving up and using your mind to take you far and understanding that you know that life will come with trials and tribulations and it's on you how you handle them and how you deal with them and she just showed me how to be stronger and also caring at the same time and my my sister my sisters my, my two little sisters <laughs> Like they they are they are amazing man like my my first little sister like man that's one of the only people that can get under my skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she, she loves she loves you that much that she yeah, that like, she, she she wants your attention. Right, man, like it's woo wee. But what's man, her name? You, what's her name? Oh, Ashley. Ashley. Ashley Alexander. And, and your so, other sister's name? Uh, Tia Barnes. Tia Barnes. And your mom's name? Uh, Eugenia Mather. Eugenia. And also my older brother, Robert Oliver. Who, who I've met. Yes, exactly. You're right. And so, and so, and so Rob, man, so Robert, Robert is someone, and it's weird that I call him Robert because we, we call him Robbie. So <laughs> it's just weird I call him that. But um, but when it comes to like him, like he he's another creative as well that I looked up to when I was growing up. Cause he's a amazing producer. And he, he worked for Missy Elliott, uh, Timberland, uh, Young Dolph, like all these great artists. And when I was younger, um, him and Wiz, uh, another producer and painter who was uh, relevant still now, they used to make beats and I used to, you know, want to make beats too. And I, I learned from them how to create my first tracks. And then that's how I added my music to my artwork. So I was able to be around amazing producers at a young age that taught me how to, you know, understand like what where the drums fit, like understanding the rhythm, understanding what strings fit, guitars, like the whole nine yards. And I did play the cello for about three and a half years when I was a kid. But understanding programming when it comes to music, that was a whole different lane. So that so those years of also me learning artwork, I was also learning music. So it was it was a great a great great upbringing and my my baby sister is a phenomenal singer. She graduated from USC actually, 
and she was recruited by Patrice Russian herself. And that and it was crazy. Like she she got on a Zoom call with my sister, her and saying, she said, I don't care what happens, we gotta get you out of here. And she and she and she got she got her out there, and that was it was incredible. And uh I was I was around just so many just talented people around my life, you know, like e- like even even though you know th- you know things happen in life, you know, you know, life, life of life at the end of the day. But when it comes to the whole the whole uh overarching lessons and love that I got from my family, like it's man, it's it's undeniable and it's I can't put into words how much I love and appreciate them. Well it comes out in your art, which is why I asked you about your family, because we are gonna go through some of your art today. And you know I'm a collector of your works and and uh you know try and uh try and shine a light on you whenever I get a chance to. But one of the things that I've always noticed is that the themes of family run through your artwork. Uh, maybe talk about that for just a moment. And then before we get into the individual artwork, what other themes are we going to see when we start talking about the works uh, that we have here? Okay, so uh, aside from the family part, we're going we're gonna to speak about the understanding of the human condition from my own experience, my own experience as a black man, and also the the legacy that one can leave behind by applying what they know within like within their practice and understanding what a process is when it comes to building who you are as a person. All right, let's test that theory for a second. Everybody always loves when we show artwork and we talk about the artwork. Let me All just right. a second. I just uh Messed up a camera here. Perfect. Let's see what we got here. All right. So here, right now, let me get it tuned in here. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let me step out of the frame here on, on the on the iPad. All right. What are we looking at here, Ken? Uh, this is the roar part two. This is a piece. Oh, are we going to say something, Mark? Nope. I'm just moving my little thing here to get nope. it like perfectly in frame on the other camera. So it's all good. You're good. Gotcha. So this is the roar part two. This is a piece that I created at a time where I was going through a like a very like a low time, a very very depressive time in my life. And I wanted to create something that that was in me that helped me get past my own self. And so I wanted to see myself as mighty and as loud as a lion going through the jungle and understanding who he is and standing in his own beliefs. And I made this, I'm talking about like just <laughs> hair disheveled, just barely eating like the whole nine yards. But I wanted to give myself a a way out of there, like a light. And so the the greatest light I could think of is being as loud as possible and, and roaring as loud as a lion. Of it, of course. It's uh, it's fascinating. I think as people get to know you, they're going to understand even more of the of the sort of connectivity between the uh, the animalistic side of you. Let's go through some of the other uh, elements here. There's some okay. very interesting elements. Okay. Uh, you want to pick? I could be. You got water flowing. Yeah, uh, wa- water is a really big element in most of my works because it represents continuance. It represents getting through something and it also represents the ebb and flow of life because I'm a big, I'm a big, um, not only fan, but I like the, the, the words and mentorship Bruce Lee has always said is like, just be water, my friend. And, and, and that, in that case, he was explaining that if you, if you have a, a cup or a stove or whatever the case may be, the water will become that. And if you understand that you that not that being stagnant will make you sick and will, it'll make you it make you stop. But if you keep going and keep filling those different forms of cups in your life, you will understand how how to move for yourself. Fantastic. Let's keep going. All right. um, down here in the water, I can't tell what that is exactly. What are we looking at here? Uh, I can't see the. No, it's like a uh, an individual. 
Oh, is the is it is it the um is it is it is it the the the, the men fishing down there? It's a man fishing. That's exactly what it is. Okay. So uh, okay, so like this this just preservation. This just un, like just getting like I, if you gotta eat, <laughs> you you must you must eat. You you must you must provide for yourself. You must you you must understand that no one is going to get you through your own things besides you. And, okay. and but, but it's also good to have friends who understand that struggle around you as well. Anything come to mind in the framing here? We've got sort of a, an old school, I don't know if this is a particular mm -hmm. drawing or photograph in the background. We've got roses, we've got birds, some of them upside down, some biblical references here. Yes, um, the, 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 the far back uh, plains and mountains were a couple of my drawings that I did, and I scanned them, and I scanned them to, from, from uh, the painting itself to Photoshop and added along with my with my motion art piece just to give it more of a of a connection to the natural and the digital and just giving it a, a healthy merger. And I use a lot of Greek, well not, not not Greek, but just a lot of a lot of statuesque uh gateways to represent fortitude and re represent strength. And the flowers represent growth. It's a lot to absorb. That's one of the reasons why I love it because I can constantly look at the uh, works and I can, you know, I can think about some of the ideas that you had. And now I have an opportunity to ask you questions. Right. This is a good, uh, let's pause for a second. I'm talking about the painting and let's talk a little bit about sort of uh, stylistically, uh, sort of your medium. Mm -hmm. so, sort of uh how do you think about how would you describe your own work um there's a bit of a collage style there how do you think about it anything any any words in particular we got some collage we got still some still image some moving image the way i always describe you just to sort of lead you know in you uh, in how i see this uh, I, I always found your works to be the closest uh, sort of manifestation of a painting in a digital format. And that was my goal the entire time is, well, like to, to keep it plain and simple, I want to see my art move. I wanted to see it move in perpetual motion on someone's wall or my wall. It didn't matter. I just want to see it move. And because I, I it, it always moves in my head. And so I wanted to make it, I wanted to see how I can make it a real thing. And so that's what I did. I just figured it out. And that's where Novi art came from. That term came from, uh, well, I, I combined two Latin words, novus and virtua. And novus meaning new or enlightening and virtual meaning virtue or practice. And it is a new, a, a new virtuistic practice or, or a new enlightened way to see art. And that's where my whole style was produced from. Love it, especially because I hadn't heard that story before, even though I didn't know no VR. All right, I'm going to let you pick what comes up next. I've got options here. I've got Black Sovereign, mm -hmm. Modern, Angel of Forest, Mars and Venus, Tower of Babel, and uh, Portraits of Wonder. We did got to go with the Tower of Babel next because, like, that is a Fan favorite right there. <laughs> it is a, it's a fan favorite. Fantastic. And can you just say, so you know, what we've been doing is, so after we release the podcast for the week uh, after uh, the podcast, your work is available for the entire Black Dove community to enjoy so that they can hear you, meet you, mm -hmm. and then bring you into their home. And so far, the response has been extraordinary. It actually has been sort of a missing piece that we barely even knew uh, was missing. It's doing a download here. It'll be back there in just one second. Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, the response was overwhelming because what we've heard from our clients is that uh, there's a lack of context in the artwork. They love the artwork, but they don't know the artists. They didn't know how to go search 
because there's no reference points. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the podcasts and interviews and conversations create uh, reference points and then we publish and the team that possess uh, Daniel and Ryan are publishing sort of in-depth newsletters uh, that are creating around, Hey, why is this artist somebody who you should be collecting? Okay. Mm -hmm. From an investment thesis, from a, artistic standpoint, all those different aspects. Uh, and so uh, this gives them the ability over that week long period to enjoy it. And then if they love it, they can talk to one of our advisors, Daniel in particular, who takes their call and works with them advisory to decide which of the works uh, for each of the collectors to, uh, to collect. This sounds okay. like an amazing concept. Yes. Yeah, so we're bringing it, we're sort of bringing it all. Now we're a little bit slow here. I don't know why actually, I didn't get it all teed up before. So we're gonna wait for just a second. Maybe I need to mess around with the technology for just a second, not a great demo situation, but still everything is going pretty well. So uh, while I'm waiting for that for a second here, Kenny, let's Good. jump into something that you've taught me about, which is uh, the concept of synesthesia. Oh, yes. The the concept that I was able to find a word to to describe my experience, and synesthesia is pretty much a a mixing and merging of of senses. And synesthesia affects people differently. It's not just one way to experience synesthesia. But for me, the main thing the main things that mix are sounds and visuals i can see sounds and it was a phenomenon that i realized when i was a young a young man and i couldn't put words to it because i didn't know i didn't know what words to use to convey that message so i put it within my artwork but as i got older and became, and became more and more studious i i ran i just ran into the word i said this is exactly it. Like it's sin meaning together, thesis meaning aesthetic, and it's this. It's just a meaning meaning of meaning of of, of of aesthetics. It's just how I how I view things, and it's it was way more simpler than I was making in my head. I was like, oh, that's that's, that's what it is. <laughs> and so, yeah, synesthesia is something that affects a lot a lot of people, a lot more people than I thought, and it affect people in different ways. Like some people may not even know that they're having that experience. And it, it can affect like taste to taste to sight, um touch to smells. Like it's it it's it affects people differently. But for me it was uh audio or visual. And when I make music or listen to music, I move my hands to the actual elements that I see and I just create different things visually while I'm listening to it. And they show up sometimes as either inorganic, inorganic shapes that has color and resonance and rhythm to it, or it may show up as a whole complete mountain piece that has those same elements in there. And, or it can be a, or it can be akin to space. And even, even vocals are, are the most interesting part of it to me because I don't see the 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 person or the mouth, but I can perceive the mouth creating this actual sound. I don't know if that make that makes sense, but it, that, but this but this how I but this how I this how I view it. And I'm gonna and, come back. I'm gonna come back to it because okay. that's that's a lot to digest. I want to let it digest in my own head. Okay. Before I ask you some more questions about that and. Uh, and Tower of Babel came up when I uh, just uh, when I messed with it for a quick second there. Uh, so, you know, it really is a remarkable piece. I remember when you created it and what was so interesting is that it was a, a, a fairly substantial leap in style for you, right? Yeah. You never had screens in your, uh, I hadn't seen a screen before inside of a screen, which is interesting uh let's dig into it here what are we what are we looking at is there uh, the, uh, speaking to the the female the back scenes what are we looking at here kenny take it from okay me. 
Okay, um, this this particular uh, Tower of Babel is the second one in the series called Purgatory. And so what and so the whole Tower of Babel concept is about the overstimulation that became normal in our society, where we where we have so much technology happening at once. We often forget to be still within nature. And that overstimulation be, became how our brains function when it came to social media or texting or calling, watching TV, doing all those at the same time. Like those, those are things that help trigger and mold the mind to the information age that we are in now. And I'll just, I was showing it in a visual representation of what it looks like to me. And, and I, I often use black women in my pieces because I think black women are just the most amazing, beautiful creatures on the, on the face of the earth. So, and <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it comes to that, like I, I, just want, I just want it to have that, that, that nature and that natural feel. And I believe that they are the closest to that to me. So I, and so when it comes to the images within and the videos within the actual piece, these are all different ways that we take in information at once and they're all like 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 some of them are you know right on the nose like you know walking through Times square or seeing seeing elephants or hearing a waterfall or even fireworks and you also have um inorganic elements when it comes to lasers beams uh patterns that are digital like these are all different things that can relate to text messaging, calling, or anything that involves the technical value of things that we all take all in at once, like social media, like taking, taking all that in at once and reforming our brains to where we're functioning with all these things going on at once, which is why so much, well, from my experience, I see so many people dealing with anxiety now, like even, even more so than the past or, or more prominent now because we're able to talk and view it more. Like since things are viewed more, like more things are brought to our attention. So until just now, I hadn't noticed that actually the screens are the representation of her of her head. Yep. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So now I'm seeing that for the first time. Uh and super interesting. I want to digest that a little bit. Fascinating. I want to think about that a little bit more. The community can uh, sort of take a look at that on their own time. Absolutely. I'm going to jump into, I'm going to jump into Mars and Venus. Let's, okay. uh, let's hit play on that one. I take a second to pull up. Let's see here. I see there's a, I feel like there's a soundtrack on Mars and Venus. Is that right? I feel like I can hear it in my head. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was. Okay. Let's see. I take a second. I think I got to clear out. I got so much art on my screen right now i might need to clean it out let's wait a second here still getting used to podcast format got to remember to get everything downloaded first that way we're not under the pressure of doing it but let's start talking about the work um in the meantime and then the video will kick in momentarily um talk to me we got uh, we got a, we got a, we got a couple here we got mars and venus is this a uh mars and venus reference that uh we're close we're planets but we're not always the same that's exactly what it is. Like it's like it's it's a very straightforward piece. Uh, uh, this is, and this is one of my more on the nose pieces, to where I wanted to show you know the the calmness and the static and the fire that comes with you know being in a relationship. Like everything won't be won't won't be you know happy all the time. Like everything won't be copacetic, but there's beauty in it because we're learning each other because we are. Men, a man and woman coming from two different mindsets, understanding each other in his in his walk of life. I think that's the most beautiful thing that we have on earth when it comes to you know one another. Powerful piece, man. It's a powerful, powerful piece on so many different levels. I love the ring of fire. Um, I don't know if I know the reference there. What, what's the what's the reference there? Oh, it's just um, the the fire, well, like the like the the, the burning desire or the fire of togetherness. Like I made a circle because it, like, you know, we feed off each other when we are in like we're we're, we're in a relationship with our with our person. We feed off each other, 
and it used to cause fire, you know, so. It's a remarkable reference. It, it is, it's a, it, it is such a truly spectacular piece. Um, and then down here on the bottom, Kenny, we got some, it, it, it looks like a, some type of a structure down here. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, that was me just adding to the, the, the foundational strength of a relationship. Got it. Because a, a, a solid foundation can, can take you far and, and can also crumble. All, all depending on our choices. Do you recall who the uh, musician is in the background, the singer is? Uh, XXX Tentacion is one of his songs. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. That's, uh, I'm going to send this over to somebody special then. Oh, okay. I'll say this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. One second. Okay. Yeah, it's a remarkable piece. Um, I'm married. I completely understand the context of what you're saying here. I mean, the graphical elements are remarkable. Anything else in here that's coming to mind? Oh, uh, no. Uh, like, it's just pretty, it's pretty much what that piece is. I love it. I'm going to go to my favorite. Uh, I have two favorites, maybe three favorites. I think, I, I think, yeah, I, I think Black Sovereign is my favorite. Man, this, uh, this, 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 one, this one of my top ones right there. I say this in my top five. Yeah. For sure. Just find, um, I just find it incredibly inspiring. Uh, talk to me about this. What are we looking at here? Oh, man. Okay. This piece was, I guess you could call it a, a testament to where I came from and where my, where my mind is now when it comes to being spiritual and walking my own purpose. Because I grew up Christian. Like, I was super into in the church. I was a usher for four years. Like, I was the president of the usher board. I was in, like, I was in church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> But uh, church, uh, it, it taught me a lot about, you know, community and togetherness and the understanding that there is all, like, there's always something you can, you know, shoot for that's greater, is greater than you. And it's, and it's always a good thing. But I also, I also felt stagnant in a way to where I wasn't growing as the man that I wanted to be. I wanted to understand who I was in my own mistakes in my own life and how I resonated with those mistakes and become better from learning from those past mistakes. Was, I'm not saying I could learn in a church, but I it felt a lot more open and freer when I did it myself. And so that spurred me on the path of understanding what what you know what love is in its most basic form at all and, and not, not that god exists in the form of love because it's the most universal thing that we have i mean you know love like love creates families like love helps trees grow love love helps water flow in the stream that it is or erode it depends on it, it depends on what it is and love is all is often destructive destructive and also create and also creation based and i if i okay all right if i wasn't if I was going to be an artist, I was going to be an astrophysicist because I wanted to understand the makings of everything, of like wh like why we're here and the meaning of life itself. And I have a theory about um, where the the physical manifestation of life comes from on a scientific point, but it's, it's a whole conversation. But um, <laughs> but, but I mean, but, but but when it comes to that, I really wanted to just um, give honor and homage to where I came from and give presence to presence to where I am now thinking as the man I am now. So it's sovereignty. So black sovereign. It's just, uh, okay. Okay. Good. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. Now I'm learning <laughs> about all the pieces that I love so much. Uh, it's like, it's like stepping into heaven, this piece, yes. right? Like that's how I feel. Like I'm stepping into heaven. Uh, is this you up top? No, it's not me. It's not me on top. It's actually one of my friends who was dancing, and it was it was a photo that I liked, and um, and I asked and I said, "Yo, can I use this?" John? He said, "Yeah, absolutely." So I just just used it, <laughs> and so yeah, it's one, one of my friends is dancing. It's amazing. It's amazing, and uh, and he is he is he coming down to heaven? What's the like? 
I've always been curious. Like he's he's like hanging out there above everybody else. I can't tell if he's coming or going. Exactly. He's being. He's being. He's just being. He's existing. Exactly. You always yeah. blow my mind, brother. You <laughs> always blow my mind. I love it. All right. I think I'm going to go. I think we have time for one more. All right. Um, so I've got uh, I've got maybe Angel of Force, always been a big fan of. I think let's go Angel of Force. How's that for you? Oh, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. This is wonderful. And then, Daniel, if you've got some questions, I'd love to get some questions from you after um, once we get Angel of Force off of here. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. So, uh, as the image is down, as the as the work is downloading here, um, do it is here. Here are the questions I've had for you. Is this a particular person? Is this a particular female? Um. Yes. Oh, uh, the the image is just a metaphorical piece of that person. Mm -hmm. But that this piece was was made in in the presence of my ex-girlfriend, to be honest. And this is someone that I was with for for about three or four years and we you know we had games to the break, break rapport with each other. Like it didn't it didn't end well, but I still appreciate the time that we had with each other. And so this is this this was made during while while we were together. And so this was a a gift to her just to um immortalize who I thought she was as a woman. And she's a she's a very she's like she's a very grounded, natural, and beautiful soul. And I wanted to commemorate that um as a piece for her. So it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Amazing. So, uh, Kenny, we will be showing you during uh, Art Week in Miami again this year. I think we've got uh, the plan ready to go. So Sounds we'll good. definitely be uh, looking forward to having you in Miami. And let me just introduce you uh, by voice to Daniel Leinfelder. And Daniel uh, is running uh, Possess. Uh, Possess is an art advisory firm for digital art. Mm -hmm. And he is a... Uh, uh well uh educated uh art lover appreciator uh and now building his advisory practice uh, he and his partner ryan holt have launched possess newsletter and possess newsletter is a research newsletter helping traditional art collectors get introduced into the new realm of digital art amazing okay daniel any uh yeah. you want to jump in here ask a couple questions um I don't have any specific questions about the pieces, but um, overall, it's, this has been very insightful for me. Um, I know obviously speaking to an artist and actually hearing them talk about their pieces helps them, helps all of us understand more. Um, and this will help us translate um, into the article better. Um, on top of that, uh, yeah, now, you know, coming into this, um, you know, the significance of these pieces, obviously, I can understand in a better way and relay them to um, our upcoming cl client meetings next week. Yeah, and that's it's, it's, it really is so wonderful. It really helps people understand mm -hmm. what they're looking at, you know, and, and sometimes you look at art and you don't necessarily know what it is. And one of the great opportunities in the digital art scene is uh, as we say, you know, artists are living, right? Not to say they're not older artists, non Jim Pike, you know, uh, et cetera. But, you know, it's nice that we are living in an era where the art that people are getting to enjoy is from artists that are living and you can meet and you can understand it because our fundamental thesis at Black Dove is that artists are the visual scribes of humanity, right? And so, uh, much like books or music, art represents a snapshot of uh, humanity. Mm -hmm. And artists are those remarkable individuals that are capturing their own moments of life, which we all feel. And as a collector of art and as a, uh, the founder of Black Dove, 
really our uh, opportunity to be able to experience your life in my home uh, and then continue to connect with you over time with more works constantly uh, constantly coming out to market as you're creating them. We have a feed essentially. It's the first time that we're all able to connect with artists all over the world and experience different uh, different, uh, you know, different mindsets and different experiences. So, Kenny, I am uh, super grateful, super happy to be able to see you again. Of course, you know, I miss you. Uh, can't wait to see you again. So happy you're well. Please send my love to your family, who I know is so wonderful. Uh, and I don't think you said it. Uh, I think you did say it, actually. Uh, just tell the audience where you live. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. In Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Anything, uh, any closing words, Kenny, you'd like to uh, say to the community? Uh, man, just keep creating and keep being yourself. And whatever, whatever's in your in your way in your life, just know that that is temporary. In um, powering, uh, powerful words, inspirational words uh, from a man who has a roared, has gone fishing, and knows how to survive. Yes.